One of the strengths of that memory is that it gives us an easy to understand overview of our application's memory usage. When opening a profiling snapshot, we can immediately see the results of several automatic inspections. On the snapshot overview, we can see these inspections in action. That memory shows us the objects taking the largest amount of memory and the objects keeping the most other objects in memory. Right underneath, that memory analyzes our snapshot for some common memory leak types. The first one here, sparse arrays, gives us an overview of the arrays in our application that are only partially filled and thus could be declared with a smaller size. Event handler leaks are displayed as well. Whenever our application code subscribes to an event and we forget to unsubscribe the event handler, the object will stay in memory. For .pf applications, there are a number of common memory leak types that that memory shows us as well. .pf binding leaks will display us objects that we are binding to, but do not implement inotify property changed. These objects will remain in memory if we do not explicitly remove the binding during runtime. A similar leak is the collection binding leak, which shows us objects that should implement inotify collection changed in order to be released from memory correctly. The xName inspection checks for UI elements that were declared in XAML, but removed from their parent control in code. These elements remain in memory until the unregistered name method is called in .pf. For every inspection, we can dive into the object sets or individual objects and look at why the object is kept in memory. But let's do all that in another screencast. Thank you for watching, till next time.